Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting another calm, peaceful sunset scene. Uh, this time it's going to be a seascape and there's going to be a, a group of small boats uh, just moored up in the shallows at low tide. My paper is Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet. It's taped to my board. Uh, my board is at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. I'm going to wet the sky area all over thoroughly so the water soaks in nicely into the paper using my large um, Chinese Harky brush. Now this holds a lot of water so I can soak the paper very quickly. And I'm going to put a, a bit of water across the sea area but I don't need quite as much there. I'm going to paint the sunset with three primary colours. Um, I'm going to use for my yellow raw sienna, one of my favourite colours, which gives me a lovely subtle glow in the sky. I'm just streaking this across the sky and across the water area uh, for some reflections of the sunset in the calm sea. The next colour I'm going to use is Rose Madder and I've changed now to my large calligraphy brush uh, to get some nice soft strokes in um, of this lovely pink colour. Um, darker and lighter in some places, I'm using thicker, drier paint in some areas and in others um, I'm leaving it nice and pale and allowing the watery paint to sort of run down and diffuse and again reflecting that in the sea as well. Now I'm using a second brush for my Prussian blue. Um, the reason for using a second brush is with the wet in wet technique I want to be quite quick getting the colour in um, and so I don't want to be washing brushes out. Um, so I'm using separate brushes for each colour and then that makes it a lot easier just to very, very quickly get the colour where I want it on the wet paper. I'm going to turn my board around just so that I can avoid the Prussian blue mixing with the raw sienna because that can form green and I think it was just starting to, just top left. Right, that settled down a bit. So now I'm just going to add some slightly darker rose madder just here and there and just allowing that to blend with the Prussian blue a little bit more so I get a sort of a, a sort of a, a, a burgundy um, colour there. Now I just need to soften that out a little bit more and this is a clean damp brush it's a, a small Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush I'm just going to use the brush clean and damp just to sort of move the paint around a little bit so I'm kind of blending in places, in others I'm lifting paint out, you can see it's getting a bit paler, but then in other areas I'm bringing across the brush and just moving the paint so I get a few sort of streaky marks um, and the intention is to try and end up with a sunset where I've got those lovely sort of small feathery mare's tail clouds running across it. So you can see there, I'm lifting out, but I'm also moving the paint around for those feathery clouds that sort of get smaller as they get further into the distance, closer to the horizon. I think that's um, that's just about it for the sea and the sky. Um, just going to blend it a little bit more um, and then I'm going to clean out my brush completely, squeeze out all the water so it's just damp. I'm going to run it just across there where I want a sort of just a vague indication of a horizon line. And now it's very important at this stage of the painting to let it dry completely and not to touch it and just allow it to diffuse. Now it's completely dried and 
it's dried beautifully soft in places but still with some some nice sort of gentle but hard edges as well um, now next thing is I want to paint my boats now I've penciled in my boats onto the sunset um, just below the horizon and this is to make sure that I I've got the boats right before I begin to paint them. Um, I don't want to just go in straight away and paint them at a risk of maybe them not working. So I've designed it with pencil first. And now I've made up a mixture of the three primaries that I use for the sky. Um, that's Prussian blue, rose madder and raw sienna and a touch of Payne's grey. And I'm going to alternate between using flat brushes small calligraphy brushes and rigger brushes and I'm going to paint in the silhouettes of these boats. I'm going to keep this nice and simple because I think that will go well against the reasonably sort of complex um, cloud patterns and sunset patterns in the sky so I'm just going to try and keep the boats fairly subdued and simple. I'm following my pencil lines quite accurately, um, if I can. Now this is why it's important when you are going to paint in boats and details like that, is that you're, you must make sure that you are happy with your drawing first before you paint over it. Um, and then you can be pretty sure that your boats will look how you want them to look and that they'll look fairly accurate. Just touching the tips of the flat brush vertically for the mast. I'm going to just paint in um, with the calligraphy brush the look of the rolled up sail where it's been put away for the night just want to it to make it look like there's a bit of bulky material that's just been rolled up there and the same for this sail. And a little bit of uh, the bulky sail material on this smaller mast here. I'm just going to work across in the same sort of way across all the boats and the posts, just putting them in using this nice, dark, fairly neutral colour um, that works so well in silhouette um, against the sunset. I'll paint in reflections a bit later, but I want to get in all the boats first. Just a few lines here and there will indicate the sort of cabin of this small boat. Of course, you can use whatever brushes you're most comfortable with for painting in these sorts of details. I like to combine my flat brushes, different sized flat brushes for different parts of the painting with a small calligraphy brush for um, slightly more um, misshapen details, etc. But the flats make it really easy to get these sort of geometric shapes into the painting um, quickly and loosely. In go the, um, the poles, the old mooring posts. trying to keep them looking a little bit uneven, slightly leaning at different angles and different thicknesses. I'm 
Now the boats are all dry, so I'm going to use the flat brush in the same sort of mixture, but I'm going to use side to side sort of sweeping motions, just using the tips of the brush, just to drag the paint horizontally underneath the boats to create a sort of combination of reflection and ripple marks. I'm going to try and sort of link across from boat to boat and then eventually across to the poles in order to create this sort of mid-tone shadow that will link across um, and pull the painting together so that the boats and the poles don't just look like they're isolated and just plonked on the painting. I want everything to link and my shadows and reflections and ripples will do that job for me. So now using the same sort of brush strokes just to carefully work across the painting towards the left where the poles are. Trying to keep the marks looking fairly uneven. Um, I don't want them to be too even and regimented um, in order to keep a sort of fairly naturalistic look to the water. As you paint, keep looking from one part to the other just to make sure that there's some balance. I'm now using my rigger. I think this is a number two or a number three rigger. Um, I'm using this to bring it down in a sort of wiggly line directly below the mast. So this is going to create the reflected image of the mast in the water. just going to put in a sort of an aerial or antenna on this small boat and then uh, reflect it with the rigger below using this sort of wiggly vertical line. Now the same way as before, I'm going to work across the boats, reflecting any masts, etc., and the posts in the water um, using the same method. Just make sure I've got enough paint on my brush now to make sure I get in some nice smooth uh, reflection lines, wiggly lines here for the posts. And now, um, sort of just to integrate things a bit more I've got some very pale grey paint and I'm just putting some really fine pale grey lines here and there starting at the back behind the boats and then coming forward uh, just to add a little bit more sort of depth here you can hardly see this but it does make quite a bit of difference to the overall look of things Just a few finishing touches now. I'm going to put in a small buoy here um, with a rope leading from uh, this small boat to the small buoy and I'm going to make sure there's just a little bit of reflection below the buoy. And remember, if you go in too dark, you can just quickly dab off with a tissue and it'll either remove it or just completely lighten it up a lot more. Now 
Now I'm just going to mix up um, an inky consistency of the same colour um, on my fine rigger brush, my number one rigger, and I'm just going to carefully paint in a few birds. I'm going to try and keep them at a sort of similar angle to some of my clouds, my fine mare's tail clouds that are coming across the page. Um, and that way it kind of looks like the birds are wheeling across the sky in the same sort of direction um, that the wind is blowing, if you know what I mean. Just going to put a few in, um, not many in this, just a few, just to add a little sign of life to the painting. Just a few smaller ones in the distance there. And now to add a little bit of rigging to this um, main boat. And I'm just using a pencil to pencil my lines in um, faintly from the top of the masts down in sort of diagonal lines down towards the hull. Just a few random lines here and there will be effective. But if you pencil them in first, it means when you go in with your rigger and try and paint swiftly so you get nice straight lines it doesn't matter if they're slightly broken or thinner in places and thicker if it's too dark again you can just dab off but you want some nice sort of spontaneous lines uh, and they'll make quite effective uh, loose rigging for a loose painting like this you can of course do the rigging with a fine liner if you'd rather if you feel you've got more control um, with a fine liner pen now it's time just to look across the painting and see if there's any other details. I think I want a little cross beam across that antennae there. Maybe strengthen up um, the rope between those, the posts and the, the boat there, the yacht. Any, anything that you want to do, you can just sort of dark, you maybe darken up your um, hulls a little bit more. But I think that's for me that's that's just about done i think i'm just going to take that pale gray mix that i used earlier and i'm just going to use the tips of the flat brush and paint a very narrow faint headland in the far distance just across the right hand side it just adds a tiny little bit more depth i think to the painting and I think that's finished now. So let's remove the tape from the edges of the painting and see how it looks. As a little bit of paint has seeped under the border on the right side, but it doesn't matter because that will be covered up with the mount when it's framed. Um, and I hope you like that. I think it looks quite pretty, really. Um, I do like painting sunsets, and especially with the silhouetted boats, I think it looks very effective. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support, and thanks so much to my lovely patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care, and happy painting. Bye.